space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise, its five-year mission to search for new life and new civilizations, to explore strange new worlds, to boldly go where no one has gone before. Wait, we're not allowed to use that? Is that plagiarizing? Oh, sorry about that. Let me, let me, um, let me mix it up a bit. Let me find something a bit more original. Um, let's see, uh, what was I, uh, uh, okay, how about this one? Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of Black Rhino Ranger's live stream. It's one to two hour mission to accept as many, um, as many space themed requests as much as possible to boldly draw what Black Rhino Ranger has never drawn before. That's more like it. Hi everybody, this is Black Rhino Ranger. 52 years from today, the, the launch of the space flight of Apollo 11 was commenced. And four days later, here it would be one small step for man and one giant leap for mankind as the first people on as the first people have their first steps on the moon. Anyways, um, let's get rid of that space screen. So let's, so I have like five different options for you to choose which one. So let's start off with this. Let's start off with, um, let's see, which ones do you want me to do? So you want me to do the space franchises as in something like Alien, Duck Dodger, Spore, Buzz, etc. Or do you want characters to be in sci-fi roles? Uh, something like Star Trek, the commanding officer, the science officer, chief medical officer. I'll design, I'll design the, the outfits, but you can ask me which character you want. Or you could just have characters holding onto Ratchet's first weapons from Ratchet and Clank, the first game, the one I first played, or holding onto Ratchet's first gadgets, again, from the first game. Or you could just ask me to draw any random alien, just any random alien to draw. Um, let me um, let me give you a better um, something like uh, this. You, you want those five options, or do you just want you want either the uh, you want the space franchises, sci-fi rules, the first weapons, the first gadgets, or just a random alien? Well, let's see. Let's see. Um, let me see more. Hmm. Um, let's see, sci-fi, sci-fi, space franchises, sci-fi, sci-fi, sci-fi. Okay, I think I've made my decision. Um, sci-fi rose it is. This would make things a bit more, that, that should help spark my creativity. Okay, so if you have nothing to request, all you gotta do is, um, all you gotta do is ask me any question. And if you like, you can use the super chat system to uh, ask me for, um, uh, ask uh, to, to request me anything um, f free from any of the rules. Okay, so let's see, which, who's the commanding officer, just like uh, Mr. Spock from Star Trek? Hmm. Are you the imposter from among us? If I was, would I be? If I was, you would have to slip a quarter in me so I would self destruct. Is it? Um, okay, let's see. Oh, you mean that? Um, hmm. You mean the one with the censor, with the guy with the nose that should be censored? Now keep in mind, since you chose the sci-fi roles, I'm allowing character requests, but I have I'm the one to design the outfits of the of the um, characters in the um, 
Um, I mean, I haven't seen a lot of Star Trek, to be honest, so I don't know how to properly shoot their costumes. So, um... Um, is, um, am I doing it right? Does elf mating call? Hmm. Can you look up at the ref some references? Um, what are you talking about? What, what do you mean references? Um. um. Hmm. Um. I'm not picky with costumes. Um, um, okay. Um, his very big feet. <laughs> it's almost dinosaur sized. Hmm. I'll just have him like. No, 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 no. I think I'll just, I'll just have him have um a star badge. No, it's not very space-like, but um, but um, um, I'm trying to make sure the commanding officer is as uh, wrong. Oh, because it's Star Trek. <laughs> All right, so that's taken care of. Um, the commanding officer is done. So who would be the science officer? Um, um, I I I'm not. Sh I think the science officer does a lot of research. On the planet, like studies and and uh, looking like studying the plant life or something like that. I am your father. No. <laughs> hmm. Is <laughs> a sign. Um, let's see him. Hmm, I don't think I did the... Wait, wait, just a minute, I need to look up some Merkins. I need to make sure the Erkins are drawn right. Hmm. Oh, wait, no.
and just upgrading his pack. Now, here's a little fun fact. Um, apparently, the pack was meant to be uh, a bit of his uh, life force. Um, and for and a pack is often there to make sure the Arkans stay alive. If they if they um, don't if they don't um, um, if they um, how, how do I say this? If they don't gain out their pack within uh, ten minutes, they'll die. And there was a there was a scrapped episode of Invader Zim that that got scrapped before when the when the show Invader Zim was was cancelled. They um they it was um it was to show that um it was to show that uh, Zim was that if it weren't that the I mean um, Dib removed Zim's pack or it, it slipped out I forget and. Um, Dib you tried to get his dad to take a look at it. And then and then suddenly the pack starts slowly possessing Dib and it makes him think he is Zim. <laughs> and uh, it leads to some very funny words like Dad, please help me and filthy human. I mean uh, help me take this off and then help me take over the planet. I mean help <laughs> something like that. <laughs> And Zim slowly gets to deteriorate. Yeah, he's got the science-y stuff. He's researching some ooze. Yep, he's the science. <laughs> Chief Medical Officer. Now, somebody has got to gotta learn how to uh, take care of those in case they're sick. <laughs> have you seen she 2018? I have not, unfortunately. I don't know if I want to, to be honest. He's saying, um, I heard the original She-Ra voice actress from the 80s one ain't exactly happy with it. Well, let's see. A nice joy, a man. <laughs> okay, let me see. Um, let me see if I can. Okay, I'm not exactly the best at drawing a Team Fortress, but um, I'll try my, I'm trying at the very least. Um, let me see, uh, no, 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 that's not how. Now, to make sure that he is, uh, to make sure he's a bit of a medical officer, um, sometimes you gotta have a, a lot of protection gear. So this is why I'm putting him in a space suit. That way, he doesn't have to get contaminated by the germs. I mean, I don't, I don't want to bring this up. I don't really like to bring this up, but a lot of people. Oh, do do wear hazmat type of suits in case um, in case they uh, need to help others in in need. I mean, look. I mean, when the pandemic uh, started, the the COVID nineteen pandemic, um, people had to wrap themselves in some uh, 
in some hazmat suits or some things that to make sure that they don't uh, get um, to make sure that they don't get um, uh, how do I say and infected they need to um, and they, they wear these suits so they don't get infected but unfortunately over time they started suffering within those suits and uh, because it's so hot in them and um, they often pass out and I even heard that some of them did get the the disease as even when they wear those suits um, Is a bit of an oxygen pack or maybe a health extra health pack. Okay, this is this is the best I could do for. Uh, let me just make his chin a little bit more uh, something. And it's a. Uh, Yeah, I think this is the best I could do. Okay, um, oh boy, this ain't exact. Oh wait, what's happening? Oh, okay, um, believe in incarnation. Okay, I got. All right, um, let me just um. Okay, let me just um, let me just get um the um. Uh, Communications officer out of the way. Um, let's see the character. Hmm. Okay, let me just give it a um, a little something to help. <laughs> uh, let me um, let me um. Um, now the the headphones thing it's um some people do in fact use it for communication like um well this is not as spacely as one would say um 
um, this um, I, listen I, I don't know about this character so um, I can I uh, I just this is my first time drawing it so um, Is it are these little flabby things? Are they are they part of his movement? Are they actually static or something like that? Or or it, does he not have a body or something like that? I'm just I'm just curious. Um, how is 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 it really his body or is it is it just the animation thingy? This one I I'm not sure. What what was it like? What was it like? Do you hate the Loud House episode Deep Cuts? I actually forgot about that episode. What was that one about? Um, and now uh, this one is, um, um, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out, um, uh, the, again, I, I just, I don't know anything about this character. Is this bot, is this, uh, is this supposed to be, uh, is this supposed to be a flab or is it meant to be, is animation or something like that? Is, this is a request by somebody else. It's a uh, Incredible Box by from Believe. I mean, let's see. Um, 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 let's see. Let's see. Um, yeah, I think this is all I could do, really. Okay, let's uh, let's um, cross this off. And uh, what was that other one? What was that other one I was asked to do again? Um, let's see. Um, uh, here it is. Um, Chief Engineer. Okay. Um, hmm. Chief Engineer. Um... Yeah, maybe one day I should do an 80s themed live stream so I can ask people to draw things that were based on the 80s at the time, like uh, um, G1 Transformers, Generation 1 of My Little Pony, um, uh, what else, what else? Uh, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Um, yeah, I am aware that there is a new He-Man show being released, but I'm not. I, I have I have uh, reminded myself about that on Netflix. Um. The fact that she uses her hair for stuff is, uh, it reminds me a bit of, um, 
Reminds me a bit of uh, what was that character's name again? Um, Frightwing of Ben 10 and uh, um, Seducer of the Power of Girls. I I know notice I notice one I remember when when Shira was first announced people the Shira and the Princess of Power was first announced they uh one of the biggest complaints about her is that she doesn't have a uh, um mass uh, big um um I don't think I can I can mention this on I don't think I can mention this on Twit on on YouTube because of demonetization uh, let's just say she had a big uh, uh something in the middle let's just say in she she didn't have that in the 2018 remake but she did however um but and yet i'm seeing a little bit of that for this character and trappa and trapta um like i said i haven't seen the show so i have no idea how to pronounce the names well Maybe I should have maybe I should have went for something glitch decks related instead. Anyways, um back to Um, let me just check on some messages. Um, let's see, um, let me see. Oh, I haven't from saying, were you able to watch the Fast and Furious films? No, I have not. I think the 90s live stream might be on August, right? What are you planning to do for Crash's 25th anniversary? Um, I haven't really thought of anything for Crash's 25th anniversary, to be honest, because, uh, I think I kind of used up my uh, Crash Bandicoot uh, um, anniversary possibilities uh, on, you know, on the 20th and the 20th the 20th uh, on, 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 20, on 2016 and uh, 2020 uh, on his 20th anniversary and his 24th anniversary videos because uh, I think I've used it all up I don't think I have anything else to plan for crushes anniversary I might instead do something for Spyro's anniversary which is a day before crashes just saying okay this is not easy to draw the shoes Hmm, this is not right. Okay. 
Okay, now to finish off her hairs. Um, I heard her hands can move as well, so... Okay, let's let's along her hair all the way down to <laughs> Nearly I am not good at uh, extra line work. But um We are wait wait there's a one more thing a little smudge here and there just gotta make sure she uh, gets a little smudge and um, there oh wait and um, there One more thing. Um. There. Now there's another strange thing about uh, both versions of Shira. Um. If for those who, if anybody remembers the uh, 80s version, um, the, there's this weird owl-like creature called Cowl. And when I look at him, he looks like Owl from, he looks like Owl from, uh, from, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? Uh, um, um, he looks like Owl from, uh, what was it, um, from Winnie the Pooh, but in the 2016, in the 2018 version, um, he looks, um, the, he doesn't physically appear, but there is a toy of him who does appear, and he kind of looks like Winnie the Pooh and Piglet. So yeah, the 80s version looks like Owl from Winnie the Pooh, while the 2016 version looks like both Winnie the Pooh and Piglet. No, really, look it up, fellas. Look up Cowl Shira, and you'll see what I mean. I uh, know, I think the nose is a little too big. <laughs> Hmm. Um, I'll I'll include a special effect on I'll include a special effect on um on that Earth or planet wristwatch in another time uh, after I finish the live stream.
and just um, a just a pair of binoculars to help him um, see where he's going. Now here is Gromit trying navigating the coordinates on his wristwatch. So he's the navigator. Okay, so a helmsman, as as far as I'm aware, is a uh, is a uh, a steering type of. Wait, wait, what was that? Why not let SpongeBob be the steerer? Okay, so. <laughs> oh dear, you can. Now this kind of reminds me of the. Uh, um, I think there was this episode of SpongeBob SquarePants um, uh, when. Um, when he was um, there, there was an episode of SpongeBob SquarePants where um, they um, they go over to this uh, boat mu museum, and um, SpongeBob has been studying, has been trying to study um, its history, and. Um, Unfortunately, he accidentally presses a button which uh, which automatically causes the uh, the boat the museum to be on automatic, and um, he and then SpongeBob then says that he's got this. So he um, he um, has the heart. He does. He he becomes captain of the ship. He has the hardy Steemans laugh. Ha ha ha. And he manages to stop the ship from crashing into Bikini Bottom. And Mrs. Puss was so impressed that he was about to give him his driving license until suddenly, until suddenly, this guy in a tugboat, who, who, in a tugboat, which was never seen before in the climax, and thing, it was just, it just, you have to see the episode in order to believe me because it's a bit of a cop out. It's a bit of a cop-out. I mean, this guy, he just shows up out of nowhere just to make sure Spongebob looks like he's a dum-dum. But, <laughs> I mean, the episode, most of the episode was fine, but that ending just kind of ruined it. I mean, it, it was a very good beginning and middle, but the ending just really, really soured it. It... In fact, I, I find I find it even more souring than cleaved from Star Versus, and many people do not like that episode, saying that Star committed mass geocide on the magic creatures, merging both Muni and Earth together, and and uh, Star didn't really get any consequences, not even Moon or anything like that. Um, so I'm just, um, so what I'm doing is just having Spongebob just behind the, uh, the, um, ship. And I'm um, just having him in a little... Okay, I'm just um, making sure he um, answer some questions. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of please draw this, please draw that. Let me just finish this uh, this uh, page request first. In the meantime, just ask me any question. Hmm, just ask me any question. Hmm. And uh, and another sad thing is that they uh, kind of did this this type of plot thing again in in um, in the episode Bumper to Bumper uh, when Mrs. Puff. Feels like she wants to leave, but she's unable to because uh, she's uh, she's uh, kind of trapped by the police. She has a little she has a little border thingy, which prevents her from um, 
um, which prevents her from, what was it again, um, from leaving Bikini Bottom. Um, so she had this idea that, she, that Spongebob should drive on a path that has no obstacles. That's completely blank, free from distractions and stuff. When at first SpongeBob seems to do well, but then, but then, traffic appears and some billboards start showing up, and SpongeBob becomes paranoid, and then suddenly, he he's able to park perfectly. He's able to drive flawlessly, and Mrs. Puff later rewards him again. But then the policeman stops by and says that Mrs. Puff stepped over the border, and the the driving test is once again uh, null and void. So yeah, Spongebob is never going to get his driver's license. There's even another one called Tudor Source, where Spongebob tries to get driver's licensing from Mr. Krabs. But um, every time he tries to do so, it ends up smashing the Krusty Krab. Um, let's see. Um, okay, here's the... All right, so the steer is done. So who's the nurse? Nurse. Who's the nurse? Nurse. Nurse. Who is? Who is? Uh, who is? Let me have a look. Let me have a look. Dang, SpongeBob can't take a break. He can't because uh, if I remember correctly, in in Mrs. Puff, you're fired. He has failed one million two hundred and fifty-eight thousand fifty-six times. Hmm. <laughs> You don't understand. SpongeBob is unteachable. We cannot blame the students for the incompetence of the teacher. Hmm. All right, all right, let's get this over with. Personally, I would have went with Carlota. Or heck, why not, uh, why not Marie, why not uh, Bobby and Ronnie Ann's mother? She's literally the nurse. Hmm. Let's see. Um. I think I better um, just draw like this. And just adding a little bit of a spaceness to her costume. Don't want this. Uh, don't want this live stream to be a little too hot. Otherwise, uh, I might not be able. I may not be able to follow the guidelines. It's
So I'm just drawing like this because, um, like I said many, many times before, the flash option doesn't, the flash doesn't uh, let you um, go down all the way unless you draw a little line to help you with that. There we go. We get uh, we got uh, Melissa Barella. I think that's how you pronounce her name. I've only seen one episode from her. That was that. That was the one where uh, the they meet her for the first time. Okay. So who's the robot helper? <laughs> who's the robot helper? Is it? Um... <laughs> I thought somebody would request me for this one. Now, originally, one of my op one of my original op ideas was to have um, people ask me to draw um, as many different alien, many different alien ideas as much as possible, oh, and many different spe fictional alien species, like all the way from Martians, like Marva the Martian or the Queen of Mars, to to Urkins from Invader Zim, to Lomaxes, to um, Yuga Potamians from uh, from Fairly Odd Parents, the Ewoks, the um, the um, those big that giant worm thingy species like Jabba the Hutt, and um, the gun, even even the Gungans like Jar Jar Binks. But um, I thought it would be a bit too too much. It, there'll be it'd be a bit too complicated. So I decided not to do that. So and I wouldn't and doing something that would relate to Mercury or Venus or Jupiter would be a bit too complicated because. I don't see a lot of media using Ju using Jupiter or, or Venus or any other planets that we are not able to inhabit as a plot. But was there a show where, where, where aliens from Venus or Mercury or Jupiter or even Pluto are featured? Actually, I do know one thing that was uh, Pluto related. There was, um, there was a Beano comic I remember reading as a kid called Zap Zodiac. It features this little spaceman who kind of looks like a tiny version of Buzz Lightyear, and he's about as he's about the size of a. He's he, he in fact the, actually fleas are a lot bigger than him. He was so tiny that he uh, his ship is about as big as a pea. He and. Um, that's because he's from the planet Pluto, and Pluto is a very was at one point a very tiny planet in our solar system. But now it's part of a now it's considered a dwarf planet. 
Have you watched Unbreakable? I have not. Um, you can make as many requests as requests. Jar Jar is not bad. I, admittingly, I, I had a soft spot for Jar Jar Binks too. How about him? Okay, so who's a weapon expert? One who's capable of supplying as many weapons as much as possible. Help with the missions and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, okay, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, um, okay, this is a new one. Um... There's a lot of different faces, I, or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, hmm. Let me just, um, oops. Hmm. A little bit more there. Okay, um. Admittingly, oh shit. Sorry, I'm just thinking to myself, um, dang, why couldn't it be something about somebody like Iron Eyed? He's a weapon specialist. the Rolling Stones say, you can't always get what you want, but if you try some time, you might find what you need. Um, actually, I think I'm doing this wrong. Sorry, I, I think I'm, I'm think I'm, sorry, ma'am, sorry, I have to start again. I think I'm doing it wrong. I think I, I think I messed up big time. And I think I should be more like this. Sorry about that. Um, I think it's just that I, I, I think I really messed up on that one. So,
Nope, that will not do. I mean, she had like two different hairstyles, but um, I think this one is a lot easier. Yeah, but she has different outfits, so I'm just gonna give her a new one. Okay, this one's just weird. I think I have to ask. Uh, let me just um just do a little this. Yeah, that's more like it. Now I just need to um. Yeah, I think I'm I'm okay without doing that. Wait, 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 wait. Here's a little zap, a little small blaster. And she has a, an even bigger one just in case. Um, let me just. Um, mm. Mm.
just answer some questions. Um, okay, sure. As the evil dictator. <laughs> just move her up a little bit so I can. And this was a and this was a big one. Hmm. Oops. And never mind. I can always uh, draw another batch. And here's a little spare, just in case she wants to go with the bigger bang. Here we go. Whew. That was a that was a big one. Hmm. All right, so um, let's uh, Kim. Let's uh, who's the evil dictator of the of the um, who's the evil dictator? Hmm. Of course. What else? Who else would be evil enough to destroy an entire Earth so they can view their... so they could have their view of Venus? Now here's an interesting fact about Marvin the Martian. When he first appeared heard in the Looney Tunes, the, the, the way he sounded at first didn't sound like the, the one we're used to. Oh, in fact, he sounded more like this. This. I mean, if you've seen his very first episode, he sounded more like a, he has a bit of a nasally type of a, of a voice. You're like, you're making me very angry. <laughs> It wasn't until the second show where they decided to give him the type of voice we all recognize to this very day. Like, the, uh, the type of voice that, um, that has been, um, where's the kaboom? They were supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom! The aluminum space module... Here, something 32 space modulator. That creature has stolen my space modulator. <laughs> um, there was even, um, there's, I mean, usually he runs in with Bugs Bunny. I mean, he was originally made by, uh, I think it was by Chuck Jones as a rival for Bugs Bunny. I mean, back then, the um, animators, the lead animators or directors were tasked to create at least one rival for Bugs Bunny. Um, Tex Avery would, uh, I think it was Tex Avery or maybe it was somebody else, uh, or Frizz Reeling, I can't remember. Um, he, uh, they um, made Elmer Fudd and this other guy made Yosemite Sam and Chuck Jones made Marvin the Martian to rival Bugs Bunny in space. Um, no. hmm. 
Um, it wasn't until Marvin the Martian became a bit of a staple in most people's in the Looney Tunes era. And I mean, he, he is a character who's known to not have a visible mouth. And yet he still has the ability to talk. There were even time, um, I mean, have you seen Duck Dodgers, the original 2003 he, uh, cartoon? Um, there were times when he was able to drink. Um, I was like, how the heck does he do that he has no mouth? Um, uh oh, hold it for a minute, guys. <sighs> Sorry about that. Uh, had to bump in with somebody. And sometimes this person stays up very late. It's very late where I am, and uh, this other person keeps often keeps wandering at night. I'm not kidding, by the way. This act, this stuff actually happens. Um, here we go. We have Marvin the Martian as the dictator. Have you seen where Marvin the, the Martian is double D substitute? I have. <laughs> He's like, um, we're just trying to buy some jawbreakers. And Marvin's like, jawbreakers, yes, yes, to break the jaws of the earthlings. <laughs> well, I think it's a wonderful idea. <laughs> uh, the fact that everyone hating on Space Jam makes me and Marvin so very angry. <laughs> I have not seen I have not seen Space Jam a new legacy yet. I have remember I do remember seeing I do remember seeing uh, the the original Space Jam. I did see some commercials of it as a kid and I um I but I I'm mostly familiar with Looney Tunes back in action. Um let's see, let's see. Let's see if I got something about my bottom. Cream. Hmm. Oh, that's something that looks like a, like a Pachycephalosaur, you see. Let's, um, let me just add in some, uh, let me just add in some things to make it a bit more spacely. Um, OK. 
Okay, um, let me just add in a little jetpack. What? They fly now? They fly now? They fly now! Why did I say that? That sounded so stupid. Anyways, um, that's, uh, that's the, that's a trooper for ya. And now some, now somebody in space who wants to collect, who wants to do some DD for, some deeds for a bit of loot. Hmm. Let's see, um, hmm. Um, what else we got there? Um, looks like Chopper. That's, they're having a dynamite! Get it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's see, um, what was that again? It's a shame that there was supposed to be a atomic, atomic Betty uh, spin-off where or an extra season where she's a lot older but but unfortunately it was canceled because uh, uh, the, the executives didn't want that that and that's the problem with with executives. Once you sell your rights to a, to a, once you sell your rights to um, um, a studio, they get to do, they get to decide the fate of their, they get to decide the fate of the, 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 the stuff you're, you're making. Hmm. Like, um, for example, I think I said this, I, I remember saying this before in the uh, schooling live stream, but um, one, of the, one of the Nickelodeon show creators uh, had her show completely axed very quickly. She originally made this um, short called Making Fiends for um, the internet, and then she pitched it to Nickelodeon, they liked it, but then... They they uh, they greenlit the episodes, but then they shafted all the they uh, they um, have did they have all the episodes air on Nicktoons instead of uh, instead of Nickelodeon, and her show was unfortunately canceled afterwards. She um, and because of that, she can never make any more episodes. Um, And also, Disney at one point had a 65 episode rule, and they, and for the most part, they, they, uh, they would, um, and for the most part, they would only allow um, up to four seasons, and no more, hmm. because they, because they want to make room for other shows at the time. Hmm. And even today, they still practice that a bit. But there are no, not not a lot of their shows lasted for more than two seasons. There are there are some exceptions like uh, Doc McStuffins that lasted for five seasons, and uh, the uh, 2012 Avengers cartoon that lasted for that lasted for um, five seasons. Um. Well, if she, if Atomic Betty can no longer go on any more, any more uh, traditional missions, and if she wants to secure her funds and stuff like that, she'll have to, um, she'll have to uh, do some bounty hunting, even if it means to axe off something. Okay, she's done.
There's a show called Bounty Hamster. I actually do remember seeing one episode. It was on the plane, and that in that episode, the uh, Bounty Hamster and the the girl character, uh, she they went they go on a planet where their dreams come true. They meet their parents, and they have everything they want. But but unfortunately, it seems something seems kind of wrong. Something something's not right. They figure that they're not real. Hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's um, pretty tragic the more. Um. Okay, so who's the goofy alien? <laughs> and who's the um, alien bystander? Let me just draw a little circle so... <laughs> if, um, according, according to his people, um, vegetables are junk food and manure is healthy food, but chocolate is poison. Hmm. It's like the f chocolate is like the foulest substitute in all my the foulest substance in all my universe. Ah, you rock! <laughs> hmm. And uh, and at one point she did he did try to and they there was a bit of a forced marriage with there was a bit of a forced marriage with um I've forgotten that I've forgotten that that the, the species but um let's just say there's this alien princess that uh, Mark Chang does not fall in love with but um he um. <laughs> And they say that she, because she is uh, so hideous, uh, so hideous. <laughs> even a, even the parents are, even the parents are not that happy with. But uh, they say they have to do it as a, as a bit of a treaty or something. But um, I haven't seen that episode in a long time, so I don't really know. And just um hmm there are some pictures where they don't they may have forgotten the brain but there are other times when he I mean when he forgotten the antenna I meant But seriously, broccoli milkshakes. <laughs> These Yucatecans are sick. <laughs> then again, they eat manure. So, yep, her name is Mindy. Okay, let's um. That okay, let's cross out the uh, goofy alien. Now, who's the regular bystanders and somebody who just appears in the background? Maybe mysterious, or maybe, uh, maybe just uh, somebody who, um, let's see, uh, Mark Chang is played by Rob Paulson, 9080, Raphael, 2012, Donatello, Yakko, Pinky Carl, and Smash It. Hmm, um, all right, hmm.
Um, hold it for a minute. Mm. Normally, he would be one of the dictators. I mean, he did tre tre threaten to destroy, to destroy the earth if nobody were to challenge him in a race. For the most part, he's usually only there for a race or something. I mean... <clears throat> um... Okay, um, I think I'll allow one more request. I'll allow one more request. Just anything, anything sci-fi related. Just name me anything and I'll draw it. I'll, I'll allow one more. Um... <laughs> Some say that that the planet Pluto does have uh, that Pluto does have um, 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 a, a dog-shaped face. Try that again. Wait, um. Well. 
I know that Pluto is the, the the planet Pluto is is technically a bit larger than 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 a human being, but um, <laughs> this is just for exaggeration. Um, if, if I recall, the, the planet, uh, some say they, they looked at it and the planet kind of looks like, uh, the marking on the planet kind of looks like this. <laughs> yeah, there's even a joke about the name Pluto in the, dis in the, in the, um, what was it, the, uh, the uh, Disney Hercules, uh, game it was uh no the disney hercules tv series i meant uh where um haiti where the, the trojans they name all the gods of course um jupiter and neptune and as for hades he gets pluto why am i getting pluto i wouldn't even name my dog pluto <laughs> say what if i make an among us billing for starring all the characters on this stream if you can, if you want, um, I, I don't know. Okay, let's see what we got so far. We have, um, we have, um, Alf as the commanding officer, in Zim as the science officer, um, that medic as the chief medical officer, um, that, uh, that character from Shira as the, uh, as the engineer, um, communications, communications, that um, I forgot that name's character's name again. Uh, has a communications officer, um, SpongeBob as the steerer, Gromit as the navigator, um, Elise uh, from Casa Grandes as the uh, head nurse, um, Rosie as the robot helper. That character from Lore Olympus as the weapon specialist, um, Marvin the Martian as the evil dictator. Um, that uh, dinosaur, Paris, Pachycephalosaurus Pokemon as a trooper, um, bound, um, Atomic Betty as a bounty hunter, Nitrous Oxide as an alien bystander, um, Mark Chang as the goofy alien, and Pluto on top on Pluto. Okay, so let's see. Did you know that rep birds are reptiles? Well, they are descended from dinosaurs, so yes, I can consider them reptiles in a sense. Belief from Incredibox, that's, that's it, that's it, that's the one. There's your scratch on the rune. Yep, yep, Hades was mad. <laughs> remember when Stewie took the cast of Star Trek to McDonald's? <laughs> yep, I remember. I have heard that that was a good side plot, but the main story is uh, terrible. Uh, let's see, let's see, anybody else, anybody else, let's see, looks like Triper, he's just in draw, draw, I'm off, okay, um, all right, um, it's, and Pluto is in Pluto. <laughs> okay, I think we're just about done here, um, and fellas, we're off, we're, we're off to another galaxy, and Houston, we have liftoff. And for for this one, and for this for my next one, we are um, join me in about four days because uh, just like my um, Easter live stream and just like my uh, was it again? Uh, um, was it my again? Uh, my my uh, snakes and ladders live stream. I'm thinking about doing another type of game for us to play, and it was and. When you think about strategy, what's the first thing that pops up in your mind? Strategy games like Age of Empire or Civilization, Impossible Creatures, Warhammer, so, something like that. Or, or do you think about something something traditional? 
Um, for me, I'm thinking about this type of traditional game we can all try and play. And all you need are five rows. A king, a queen, a bishop, a knight, a rook, and actually six, I meant, uh, and, and a pawn. Actually, one king, one queen, two bishops, two knights, two rooks, and eight pawns. That's all I, that's all I have to say. Thank you for joining me. See you all in the next live stream. I hope you've enjoyed this video.